Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'd like to welcome y'all back to Mega Tech Nerd Video. I'm Rhino Cross, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to convert your Cinema DNG files into PSD files. And the reason you would want to do that is so you can maintain the entire bit depth of the 12 bit Cinema DNG file when you bring it into Premiere. Premiere Pro CS6, the Cinema DNG importer that you use from CS5.5 that works for CS6, only supports 8 bit frames. So if you bring your Cinema DNG files straight into Premiere Pro CS6, you're actually losing 4 bits of information. Since I have an 8-bit monitor and an 8-bit video card, I'm not going to notice a difference anyway. But I want to retain as much information in my file format so I can render from as high a resolution of file as possible. Also want to convert your stuff to PSD simply because you want to maintain the full resolution as far as the 2.5K Cinema DNG file. I don't want to convert it down to 1080p yet. I want to render from a full 12-bit 2.5K image. And the one way to do that, 16-bit PSD. Now you can export to a 16-bit TIFF or a 16-bit DPX, but Premiere Pro CS6 doesn't support those formats at that bit depth. You're going to get an error message, but you won't get an error message with a 16-bit PSD file. So since I have Adobe Creative Cloud, Adobe Everything, PSD works great for me. Use whatever works for you, but this is pretty much for Adobe um, Adobe CS6 users. So without further ado, let's get into it. The easiest way that I've seen to do it, or one way I'm going to show you how to do it right now, is with Adobe Lightroom. Inside of Adobe Lightroom, you have all of your camera raw options with scaled down options outside of um, Photoshop. Because this is Photoshop Lightroom. It's just a scaled down version of Photoshop. Great for processing images. And I'm going to show you how. What you do is, inside of, inside of your library, what we're going to do is, you can see I already have one selected. And I already have some images imported. And I'm going to show you how to import some. So you just come over here to import. You can just choose your folder. You can see all of your Cinema DNG files in the sequence. We're going to process, we're going to batch process them. Don't worry about it. And you have your source over here on this side. You have your destination over here on this side. You just choose whatever folder you want it to go to. One thing to look at is if you're just starting off with this, most likely it's going to be set to um, organize it by date. And you'll end up with a file structure that looks like this with the folders named as the dates when the, fo when the files was created or however they have the dates set up in the camera. What you want to do is set it up to buy original folder. That way, in your destination, you end up with a folder that m matches the name of the folder that you have right here. It's just easy to work with. I have mine going into a subfolder. You don't have to use that if you don't want to, but it helps me organize my stuff. So once you choose that, you can um, come over to import, and once you import, you'll end up with something that looks like this. Inside of the um, library tab, you can see that I have this folder selected. This is what I'm going to work off of. And you still have some options that change the metadata right over here. You have access to everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a little light coloring. So you have the raw images right here. You have everything imported. This is the Cinema DNG file that we're working off of right now. Now, inside Lightroom, you have your color presets over here. You can choose a preset. Or you have your color, your camera raw options. And you can change the exposure, the contrast, the highlight, shadows, whites, blacks, and all of that. And you have all of the options that you would have inside of Camera Raw and some stuff that you have inside of um, Photoshop. That's what's great about Lightroom. It's, it's Camera Raw and Photoshop mixed in together. And you can change your white balance right here. Go over to Auto. Go over to Daylight, depending on whatever you think he was doing. or well, whoever shot the footage or if you shot the footage. But I'm going to just go to Add Shot. Or you can go over to add auto, but I'm gonna go to add shot just so it um zeroes everything out. Now, one thing I'm gonna let you know is do not select auto. Select auto for your white balance, but do not select auto for tone, because what that's gonna do is if you have everything selected and you press auto sync, anything you change in this one file is gonna sync over to everything else. Yet, if you hit auto, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give an auto preset to every single separate file so what you're going to end up with is this one is going to have some settings that this one it might have these four might have a setting and then these three might have a setting over here and it's going to all look totally different or whatever you don't want to do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just hit reset 
and bring everything back to the original Cinema D&G presets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just choose a preset over here, one of the coloring presets. I'm going to choose this. And it's great because it's non-destructive. So all you're doing is just changing some color settings. And that's it. And it's going to automatically sync to everything else. And you can scroll through. Now, you can't play it back as if it was a video file. That's what's bad about it. But you still can process everything right now. And say you had everything. As you can see, it's updating and it's going across all of the files right now. Now, what you can do is once you have this set up, and you did your color or as soon as you import everything if you don't want to do any color inside of um Photoshop Lightroom all you would have to do is just make sure that everything's selected that's why you want to make sure everything's selected and go over to export export the hard drive choose the folder choose specific folder you choose whatever folder you want your stuff to go to you set it up the way you want and then you select that folder and then that's going to bring it up right here and you can also choose put it into a subfolder so then you can make another subfolder to help you organize your stuff. And this is where the money is right here. Down in file settings. You can choose whether you want to go out to JPEGs, PSDs, TIFFs, DNGs, or leave it as the original file format. In order to bring it into Premiere, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make it a, six, a PSD file. Premiere supports 16-bit PSD files. And you just change the bit depth to 16-bit. And... There's a big debate going on whether you should use sRGB, Adobe RGB, or Profoto RGB. The safe bet that I'm thinking about is just using Adobe RGB until I learn different that I should not be using. I'm going to just use that. Use whatever you want. Leave everything else alone. And then you would go to export. And once you go to export, you can see the following files already exist. I already did this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to over overwrite that just so you can see the process and as you can see we have our export our process bar going on over here our progress bar going on over here and it's going to do everything and the one thing that's great about this is instead of like doing it inside of photoshop photoshop would open up each one separately and process it now whichever one is faster i'm pretty sure it might be the same thing it might not be but this is like is about as fast as the process as I could look for. Now, if you had thousands and thousands and thousands of images, this might take a long time. But processing raw film from a film camera, I imagine, takes a long time, too. So don't complain about the easy digital process that you have right now. I mean, and plus, you still have access to the originals. Now, you could also use Adobe Bridge. As you can see, I already have a folder selected. But you would just um, look for wherever you have your stuff on your hard drive. And then you would just select your files. Use Control-A, select all of them. Right-click, open in camera raw. And as you can see, you have them opened up as a stack. You just select all of them. And you could do your um, light grade right here. And once you were ready to export to PSD files, you would just choose your color space, whichever one you want to use. I'm going to just leave it on Adobe RGB. And then you just change this to 16-bit. And then you choose your file size or your, your image size. And as you can see, we have the ability to set, set it to 2.4K or 2.5K, I guess it is. Leave everything else alone. And then you just press OK. You just set that right there. Now when you go to... um save your images and you would just go over to save images and it would save all of them out to whatever folder you select here so you would say save in new location select the folder that you want to select it save it to make sure that the file extension is on PSD you can choose any format that you want format is Photoshop and metadata is set to all then you would just press save and as you can see it's running down as it's processing all of them, it's saving all of them. And once you're done, we should end up with a PSD folder. And you will end up, and this might, this is a different folder, but as you can see, it's still, this is what you'll end up with. All of your PSD files. And you'd be able to open these up inside of um, Photoshop if you wanted to. But the one thing that's bad about this is the file size is ridiculous. 
the Cinema DNG files. I'll show you. Let me see. Open a new window. Just so you can see the visual of it. Open up the properties. All right. This is the Cinema DNG original, and this is the PSDs. This is not optimized for storage space like this workflow if you're running low on hard drives this is not the workflow for you but if you have a couple of clips that you want if you have a couple of images a couple of clips that you want to put inside of Premiere at full resolution until the importer is fixed this is just one way to do it this is probably not a real world workflow unless you had like an insane amount of storage because you can see the original cinema dng files are about 4.7 megabytes it's like 5 megabytes right there and the 16-bit psds about 19 so this is 5 and this is 19 so let's just say this is 20 to round up and this is 5 it's about four times bigger and you'd have to keep that in consideration so if you were already thinking oh man these raw cinema dng files are going to eat up hard drive space this workflow is ridiculous <laughs> this is sort of like the ludicrous workflow like i doubt this would ever be used in a real world situation but this is just one way to go about it and this just lets you know how how important it is for you to go over to the um, feature request form and request that the Cinema DNG importer supports 12-bit frames because this is one of the ways to get all 12 bits inside of Adobe Premiere, which is ridiculous as far as how much space you would have to use. But if you just have the short clips that um, Black Magic released and John Brawley put out, then yeah, you can use this because this whole folder the cinema dng folder just one of them well the shot three folder well now nah, this one i got two of them yeah so the shot three folder is 328 megabytes that's all of the clips in there and i think it's like 69 clips i may be wrong but the psd f of the psd the converted psds that folder is 1.2 gigabytes so you have the original which is 328 megabytes and then when you convert that folder's worth of files over the PSDs, then it's one point, then it's one point two gigabytes. So then you got to keep that in consideration. But for right now, you'll be able to handle that no problem. Now, if you had an hour's worth of footage, you can obviously see where this would be ridiculous. <laughs> but just with the short clips, if you want to see how your computer handles the 12-bit files or the 16-bit files, you can handle this right now. But as far as if you get the real camera trying to convert that. Nah, that would be ridiculous. And that is how to process your Cinema DNG files with Photoshop Lightroom into PSD files. All right. So I hope this helped you. If it did, leave a comment, subscribe, share. And let me know what you think. If you have any other suggestions or whatever, just send me something in the comments or the emails and I'll work it out. All right. Happy editing. Till next time. Bye.